Still, Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind, in pure lives thy service find, in deeper reverence praise. In deeper reverence praise. In simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord, let us like them without a word rise up and follow thee. Rise up and follow thee. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love, interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace the beauty of thy peace. Breathe through the heats of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O still small voice of calm, O still small voice of calm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome everybody to our Mass today. It's the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time. It's also Father's Day, so of course we're thinking of them very much during our Mass today, remembering them, praying for them and the great work they do as guide and mentor of their children in the partnership with their wives, spouses. So to prepare ourselves and celebrate the Mass together, let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
Let us pray. Grant, Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And today we have Ruth who will proclaim our scriptures for us and lead us in our bidding prayers. A reading from the book of Job. From the heart of Tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who pent up the sea behind closed doors, when it leapt tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist, and made black clouds its swaddling bands, when I marked the bounds it was not to cross, and made it fast with a bolted gate? Come thus far, I said, and no farther. Here your proud waves shall break. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. O give, give thanks, thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Some sail to the sea in ships, to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds the wonders he does in the deep. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, tossing the waves of the sea up to heaven and back into the deep. Their soul melted away in their distress. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. All the waves of the sea were hushed. Oh, oh give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. Oh, oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And all was calm again. 
Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, after golf, we were looking at some photos of our early days at the seminary, in one of which there was a lad uh, called John Case, an absolutely lovely guy. We used to, we used to call him Justin, you know, just in case. Uh, one morning, though, I remember at breakfast him asking me, had I been frightened during the earthquake? He'd leapt out of bed, fallen to his knees and prayed as the college shook. I and several others at breakfast looked at him in mild concern for his mental welfare, as we hadn't felt the thing. But then we found out it was true, an earthquake had taken place the night before in Lisbon, in Portugal, but the aftershock had indeed reached us in central Spain as well. Now I'm actually a very light sleeper, so how I slept through the earthquake I really don't know. There are people, of course, who can sleep through anything. It's always amazed me when I was in the army at how soldiers could sleep next to a noisy generator or a tank suddenly roaring into life. Some would say that it was through exhaustion or because of a good conscience. In the case of Jesus in today's gospel, there he is fast asleep while the storm rages. We can safely assume a good conscience. But he's also exhausted, having just finished teaching for several hours at the lakeside where there were so many people that he had to get into a boat so that they could all see him and hear him. No surprise then that uh, he soon fell sound asleep, but a huge surprise as to what happened next. In the second reading today, St. Paul says, From now on, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh, because that's not the way we know Christ. And for anyone who is in Christ, there's a new creation. So, as the apostles unfurled the sails and made ready for cast-off, I wonder if for them it was just another day at the office, like roadies packing up after a rock show. Once again they'd seen this man, who they call their friend, transfix the crowd with a new way of teaching, as he always did. So, time to move on, get some rest, have something to eat, as any other band of men would do. Certainly, they never foresaw the drama that would soon unfold, because if they had, they might have advised them not to set sail, especially in the evening. After all, these men, until recently, had made their living from fishing these very waters, so they knew their changing moods pretty well, I'd say. Be that as it may, the storm did come, and as it raged and got worse, they realised the mortal danger they were in, and unable to believe that Jesus would calmly sleep on, did exactly what we would have done. They woke him up. He, of course, is tired and weary. Might even be a bit cranky at being woken up, as some of us would be. So he stands up, he rebukes the wind and calms the sea. But then he also rebukes the apostles, amazed at the fact that they thought he didn't care about them and would let them drown. Why were you frightened when you know I'm with you? In that storm at sea, the apostles learned the truth in the most dramatic of ways that for anyone in Christ there is a new creation. They had judged him by the standards of the flesh, just a man sleeping, apparently at peace, oblivious to the disaster that was about to befall them. But once his true nature had been revealed to them by his power over the elements, they were probably more afraid after the storm than during it. Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. So the apostles came to know Christ in a new way. And for those of us who are in Christ, so must we. Christian living is based on having a relationship with Christ as the focal point of all aspects of our life, even in great danger or when death is just around the corner. We have to know Christ in a different way than those who judge by appearances and just think of him as an important figure from history. All of us, of course, are familiar with the image of storms in our personal lives, and when a severe one comes along, we may well feel as the apostles on the boat did. Does God not care that I'm sinking, 
that I'm going under, that I feel completely overwhelmed. And yet in the midst of it all, we know that Jesus is there, even when he doesn't seem to be around or able to help. To journey with Jesus is to go through storms, not to sail around them. And this is dangerous work sometimes. What keeps us going is our strong belief that in spite of everything, he is Lord, ruler of chaos, and there's no storm which is present in our lives cannot calm. So let's now profess our faith, and today we'll use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you as always for sending us your Son, Jesus, to lead us to you through the storms of life which inevitably we all encounter. We thank you for the consolation of knowing that his Spirit is with us through it all, as we now put before you our prayer. As always, we thank you so much for listening to our prayers, and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of us, Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church is one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Lord, with favour on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel, strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Paul our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Wilson, St. Edmund, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And for those at home, let's offer each other now a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And 
and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me promise good to me, his word my hope secures, he will my shield and portion be, as long as life Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. It's with peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.